good afternoon when you come in like the video hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you like the content but this will be a review on the woman king i went and saw the movie yesterday me and my co-worker went in there and see the movie uh when we got there uh there weren't a lot of people in there and then the black people start coming in and i want you guys to understand there were a lot of black women at the movie theater supporting this movie um there were also black men there but there were white people there too there were a lot of white couples that came and saw the movie the woman came so there was a lot of black women in there i mean there were like two different parties of black women that were at least 15 black women deep so they came out and support this movie um to sum this movie up to me, what I got from The Woman King when I watched it, and it is a good movie, uh, but when I watched it, what I got from the movie was sisterhood. That's what I got from the movie. Um, it was actually a relief that the movie was mainly about those women of the Dahomey tribe. And um, something that I noticed when the movie started you know, everybody looked at the trailer of The Woman King and everyone was like, well, there's just dark-skinned women in there, masculine, dark-skinned women in there, and that's not the truth. Like, I don't want to spoil you from going to see the movie, so I'm not going to tell you everything about the movie. For people who want to go and support those um, black women from all across the diaspora that played roles on this movie... That was a part of the cast. I'm not going to, you know, tell everything that happened in the movie. Because if you want to go see it, go see it. If you want to support it. It would be best if you support it by going to the theater. Not watching it on bootleg. Okay? Because, you know, when people bootleg movies, that's a crime. They're committing a crime to go in there and record that movie. And to come sell it back out on the street. And that's taking money out of the mouths of those women that played an awesome job. They did an awesome job in that movie, I must say. But what I got from the movie was sisterhood. That's what I sum it all up to be. It was all about those black women of all skin tones. There weren't just dark-skinned black women in this movie, y'all. <laughs> they weren't. They were brown-skinned black women. Um, a couple of them, a couple of them, you would say they were light skinned. Not that much. It probably was about three of them that you would say was light skinned that had, you know, played scenes in the movie. But a lot of them were brown skinned, dark brown, dark skinned. And it just showed all skin tones in this movie. So it's just not dark skinned, the homie warriors. Okay. They were of all complexion. And let me tell you another thing that I got from the movie. The only time those women were masculine and the only time that they came across like they were acting like men or whatnot was when they were in their war attire. When they had those uh, uniforms on, when they went to war, that was the only time mainly they were masculine. But when they were out of those uniforms, they were feminine. They were absolutely beautiful. There were beautiful black women in this movie. That's something that I want to express to you guys. They were absolutely stunning. They were beautiful. They were rocking natural hairstyles. Some of them were rocking braids. Some of them were rocking cornrows, afros. They were doing all different black hairstyles in that movie, honey. They was giving it, babe. They were giving it, okay? When they came out of that war attire and they put on more feminine clothes and uh, the feminine attire when they were celebrating or when they were having festivities and eating together and stuff like that, when they were dancing in the courtyard of the palace, they were very feminine. The only time they were masculine is when they were training and when they were going to battle um, up against black males. And that's another thing that I did like about the movie. These women did come across like they could be divested. I'm not going to lie. Now, they were 
following the commands of a king, which was John Boyego. He was the king. So they were following commands from the king, but it was all about the women. There were black males a part of their army. There were black males a part of their army, but the women were the focal point. Like the women was locked inside of the palace. They could not get married. They could not have children. If they still had their virginity, they couldn't lose that. It was all about sisterhood. It was all about being a woman, standing on your own, not needing a man, not wanting to be a wife, not wanting to be a mother. That's what I got from that movie. It was a lot of sisterhood in that. But what I also got from the movie was that what black men are doing today is exactly what black men did back in the day. Like they were trying to sexually assault those African women, those warriors. Um, a lot of them came from a background of being captured and being sexually assaulted by these other uh, African black males of these other tribes. Um, there were scenes where the parents of the African women were trying to sell them off to the highest bidder like sell them off to a rich king, a rich African king or something like that, or an African man that had a lot of money. And a lot of those women that were a part of the Dahomey tribe basically ran away from their tribe. They were captured and they ran away. Or some of them did not want to conform to being um, an African man's wife. They didn't want to do that. So a lot of them bucked the system and they did not went along with it. In one scene, one girl was um, going to be sold off by her father, her mother and her father, but mainly by the black male. She was going to be sold off to this old, unattractive African man that had money, and he was ugly. Let me tell you, in the movie theater, all the black women was like laughing. They were gasping. They were like, oh, no. Because he was that ugly. And they were trying to sell off um, the youngest, one of the youngest girls that became a part of the Amazon Warriors, the Dahomey Warriors. They were trying to sell her off. But she didn't want to go with that man. So when the man told her, hey, you're my wife, I'm going to take you away. She uh, jerked back from him. She pushed off from him. And he got upset. And he slapped her. And he slapped her hard. I'm talking about slapped the taste out of her mouth. But when he slapped her, she pushed him with a whole lot of force. She was going back at him. She was not going with him. So what happened was her father got upset with her. He said, you're not, you're not going to be anybody's wife. I'm not going to be able to like sell you off to be nobody's wife or give you off to no African king or no rich African guy. He was like, pretty much you're useless to me. And this was her father. And so he decided to give his daughter to the king, the Dahomey king, which was John Boyego. So he brought her to the palace and he was like, I can't do anything with her. Nobody wants to marry her. She's not going to be a good wife. She's useless. So maybe she can be, you know, a part of the Dahomey warriors, the, the black women warriors. So he gave his daughter up. So that's one of the scenes. I'm not going to tell you guys anymore. Um, but the black males were carrying on just like how they carry on today. They didn't like black women. They sold you off. They sexually assaulted you. They thought that you were less than. And so a lot of the women became a part of the women warriors, the Dahomey women warriors. Because they were trying to get away from the men. Some of them had been captured in rape. Um, Viola Davis' character had been through hell with those African men. And Viola Davis did a wonderful job with this movie. She was the main character. She was the general of the Dahomey Women Warriors. She ran the show. And even though the king... Um, gave them commands. A lot of times, Viola Davis did what she wanted to do. And they were respected in their tribe. They were very much respected. And a lot of the women wanted to be them. 
wanted to be just like them, wanted to go to war, wanted to fight for their tribe, fight for the Dahomey. And we all know that the modern day name for the Dahomey is, I think it's Benin. I think they call it Benin or Benin. That's the modern day name of the Dahomey of the Dahomey tribe. So, you know, they got rid of the name and now it's Berlin. I think it's close to Nigeria. Uh, Tango is close to that area. But the movie was action-packed. There was a lot of fighting going on. And let me tell you, I was rooting for those women because they were up against big-ass, unattractive black men that were violent, um, wanted to abuse them and sexually assault them and sell them into slavery. And they fought back against those men. And that's something I did like about the movie, that they were fighting black men and they were taking them out. Okay. They were up against big ass Negroes and they were chopping them down. Okay. These women were true warriors. They stuck together. They believed in a sisterhood. There were no men around when they were doing what they were doing. The only time the men were around is when they were training or they went to war and the men were backing them up. But they pretty much ran the show. It was really graphic, violent. Um, there were a lot going on. Some of the female warriors had got killed too. So it's real graphic. It's very violent and it will make you emotional. I will say that throughout that movie, I actually cried a couple times. And the reason why I cried was because of the sisterhood. A lot of black women have said that they wish for a place where nothing but black women could go to. And we didn't have to focus on being wives and being mothers. And we can just enjoy each other company and build on a sisterhood and live in peace away from men. And that's what I got from the Dahomey. Uh, black women warriors. That's what I got from that movie. Um, they just wanted to be together. They didn't care anything about those men. Um, sometimes throughout the movie, some of the women would like think about being married or think about men or, you know, think about children. And then the other women that starred in the movie, like it was four main characters of the movie, including Viola Davis. And when those thoughts would come up, a lot of those women were telling each other, we are all we got. That you don't have to worry about that. You shouldn't worry about marriage. You shouldn't worry about kids. We have to stick together. You're a warrior now. And we don't concern ourselves about that. And that's basically what they were about. Um, sticking together and looking after each other. But I must admit that the movie is not exactly like the true history of the Dahomey tribe because we all know the Dahomey tribe was selling slaves for a very long time. And I believe they kept selling slaves all the way into the 18th century that I believe the French, the European men had to come in and stop them from selling slaves. So it is different from the actual history of the Dahomey tribe but it is a movie, okay? So they made it about what they wanted to make it about. But they were talking about stop selling slaves. Especially Viola Davis' character. She was trying to convince the, the king that they don't need to sell slaves anymore. And she was doing that throughout the movie. But it was a really good movie. But what I liked was the image of black women in this movie was sticking together sisterhood fighting together loving on each other being that support system and having each other's back and that movie was a reflection of what black women need to try to achieve together you know we keep talking about a sisterhood but we keep going at each other now we got this beef going on between you know divestors and women that are not divested and sugar babies and then you got people dragging sex workers and we need to understand that all of us are divested. We got women from all types of background, all different types of lifestyle. You can be a sugar baby and be divested. You can be a sex worker and be divested. 
You can be a woman with a career and a four-year degree and still be divested. We come from different backgrounds. This shaming each other or trying to make people feel bad about what they do for work. Because sex work is work. They do pay taxes. They are taxpayers. And all of them do not sleep with men to get the money. I want to clear that up. So all of this shaming each other because we go to work or we got a career or we got an education. Or shaming each other because they're sex babies or the cam, webcam girls or content creators or scrippers and stuff like that. You're shaming the sex workers and you're making them feel like this isn't a space for them. And there's all types of women in this space. You would be surprised the background of all these women. So if, if baby mamas are allowed in this space, I don't see what's the problem with sugar babies and sex workers being in this space. But I've come to realize that some of you, you think that you're better than somebody else. And so that's why you have to showcase your life. You have to tell us everything that's going on with your life because you think that you're better than somebody. And just because you're engaged or going to be married to a man, that does not make you better than the next chick. I support black women of all different walks of life, whatever your lifestyle is. If you don't want to deal with the man just for love, marriage, and some fucking kids, you don't have to. If you want to put a price tag on your time, you have every right to. There's a lot of women that lay down and get nothing out of the deal. Trying to shame women that are trying to take care of themselves and keep a roof over their head. Some of these sex workers are literally making more money than these women that go out and get these four-year degrees. And I respect these women that go to college and get a career and do what they got to do to take care of themselves. I respect all black women from all different backgrounds. And we need to learn to do that here. Nobody's better than nobody else. But trying to shame people because you get into one disagreement with a chick, it just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. But that's what I got from the movie. I'm not going to say anything else. I want you guys to do your own research. And I want you guys to, you know, if you want to go to the movie, go to the movie. But do not go and look it up on bootleg and claim that you're feminine and you're leveled up. If you're crying about $8 to $10 for a movie ticket, then your ass should not see the movie. If you don't want to go see it, that's fine. But believe me, it's not exactly what everybody's saying it's about. Those women were very feminine when they were a time to be feminine. They had beautiful attire on when they were outside of their war attire, outside of their war uniforms. They were very beautiful, and they were from all different backgrounds in this movie. You had black American women in this movie. You had African women from um, Ghana in this movie. You had South African women in this movie. You had black British black women in this movie you had women from the caribbeans in this movie this was a movie that had all black women from all across the diaspora participating in this movie and i wanted to support it plus i wanted to support viola davis a black american woman that was born and raised from south carolina not too far from where i grew up and was raised at so i'm going to support her just like I'm going to support the Little Mermaid, Holly Bailey, because Holly Bailey and Chloe Bailey, they have a lineage back to South Carolina too. Matter of fact, Chloe Bailey was in South Carolina last week visiting family here. So um, I'm going to support these women. We have to stop allowing people to come in and separate black American women. Especially trying to separate us off um, our different lifestyles or our different skin tones. Like it's petty. Crying about the Little Mermaid being light skin or whatnot is just petty. We need to learn to work together. You have people that cry about colorism all the time. But they don't want nobody to judge them from being dark skin. But they'll judge a light skin woman off her skin tone. Let's celebrate the Little Mermaid. If you don't want to support, just stay silent. If you don't want to support Viola Davis with the Woman King, just be silent. Some of you need to stop always 
uh, engaging with shit that just does not make sense. Some of you need to grow up. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of confusion going on in the divestment movement. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't talk about nobody behind their back. I don't go in no paid behind any paid wall and discuss anybody on YouTube. I don't do that shit. So I hope the women that follow me do not participate in that. We got black women from all different walks of life that's a part of the divestment movement. So y'all can stop it. Stop acting stuck up. Stop thinking you better than somebody else because you got some damn white man. There's plenty of us that got white men around here. We just don't showcase him all over the place because we do not need the validation and approval of everybody. Plus, a lot of us care about our white spouse. That's why we don't put his face all over the place. But hey, do whatever you want to do. But stop trying to shame people. If they want to be sugar babies, let them be. If it's not hurting you and it's not bothering you, let them do it. Stop attacking divestors. Stop doxing us and leave us the hell alone. And that's pretty much all I got to say because I don't even want to talk too much. That's it. I'll talk to you guys in the next video, okay? I think I covered whatever I needed to cover, but I didn't want to tell you guys too much about the movie. Because if you want to go see it, then go see it. But we have to stop this drama. I'm tired of it. It's been going on for the last two or three weeks. Going back and forth with each other, calling each other prostitutes. Those women are taxpayers. And because if you want to be with a man for love and money, do whatever the fuck you want to do. Stop judging each other because we want to go to work or we got careers and we go out there and do our jobs. Stop judging people off of that. We have to learn to get along. And that's all I got to say on that topic. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.